In this video, I'm going to talk about pH. Some of the tanks I'm going to show you have only been set up maybe two and a half weeks. Others have been set up for years. And I want to give you a comparison of what my tanks are reading as far as pH goes. It seems like that sometimes when people use kitty litter or, or oil dry or one of them, that they seem to have a problem with their pH going too low or too high. So I'm going to show you some tanks that have 100% kitty litter, others that just borrow some, or should I say, just have a little bit of it added into the aquarium. And we're going to take a look to see what the pH of the aquariums are using different substrates and their age. That's all coming up next. I've shown you this in other videos. I bought it off of Amazon. And what I'm going to do is make sure that it's calibrated correctly and it's reading correctly. Then after that, I'm going to show you the pH of all my aquariums. And I'll talk about that as I go to each aquarium. But let's make sure the meter that I have here is reading right. Now, the green fluid that you see on your left has a pH of 6.86. Fluid that looks yellow or orangey, very light orange, has a pH of 4.0. So let's see what the meter reads when I put it inside of the fluid to see if it needs to be calibrated. Six point eight. Eight nine, eight six. There. So that doesn't need to be calibrated. That looks good. Let's see what this one does. Let me wipe it off, clean it off, and find out what it's going to do for the four point oh. Okay, I calibrated it. Now it's reading 4.02, 4.03. So it need to be adjusted for the 4.0. And now it looks real good. So now the meter has been calibrated. Let's go check out the aquariums. Okay, the first tank I'm going to test is the Antique Aquarium. Antique Aquarium has no substrate in it. It's using a BCB bag for all of its filtration, and we're going to test out the pH of this aquarium. So as we hold it in here, you got to hold it in the water for a little while, and as, as we see at 7 point, oh, I would say 7.2 to 7.3, just got to give it a little while to settle down. So, nothing wrong with that. I'll accept that. Now, this is the aquarium that carries just the BCB bag and the filter. That's in the filter and no substrate. The bag is full of kitty litter. Okay, here we are at the 90 gallon. Now, the 90 gallon is going on three years old. It uses uh, gravel on top of the substrate, which is uh, the fluval substrate for plants. It has a little bit of kitty litter in it and has laterite in it. And the tank's going on three years old. So it has a plenum that's been running now for close to three years. And of course the substrate hasn't been cleaned or anything, but we're not going to have to get the pro, mix it up a little bit. Let's see. We'll have to wait for it to calibrate itself. Let me move it around. It says to do this, that you're supposed to move it around. You know, it's not instantaneous. And as we can see, it's reading about 7.4, 7.5. I'll move it around a little bit more. I'll shut it off. Turn it back on. Yeah, so... We're right there at 7.47, 7.5. Okay, so I 
not too far away from what the other aquarium showed. Now this one's been up for, well, almost three years. The substrate has not been clean, and still the pH is what? 7.5, 7.4. Not bad for a tank that's going on three years old. Uh, the fluvo substrate is the substrate that people complained about uh, of making their aquariums acidic. It did do that, but it needed to run its course. And now look at it. It's reading uh, 7.5, so that's not too bad. It's jumping around a little bit, but you can get a pretty good measurement that what you have. Stir it up. Okay, the next aquarium we're going to try out. This is the brand new 12 by 12 by 12 aquarium I just set up. It's my most recent videos of how I set it up. Now, this aquarium for a substrate, uh, like the 90 gallon, is using a plenum, but for a substrate in this one, it's 100% kitty litter which is uh, whiskers and tails that we buy here in Florida. So let me shake it up. 7.3. Let me shake it some. 7.29. 29. So we could see it's almost 7.3. Shake it a little bit. I like to turn it off, then turn it back on again. 7.3, 7.29. So we could say between 7.29 to 7.3. Now this is the brand new aquarium. As you can see, this aquarium is mimicking the 90 gallon. That's been set up almost three years. Now I know a lot of people have said about um, the kitty litter and stuff, may make your tanks more acidic, they may make your tanks more alkaline, but as we could see, this one's about 7.3, doing great. And this is 100% kitty litter in this one. It's got 100% kitty litter, as you can see. There is no additives. I added iron by Flourish Iron, and that's how I added the iron to it. Very primitive tank, uses a box filter, bubblers, that's it for filtration system. Of course, it's got the hanging light. But, uh, yeah, 7.3. And uh, this Friday will be three weeks old. So that's not bad. So apparently the kitty litter that I'm using in this particular aquarium is not causing the aquarium to uh, go acidic or al alkaline. It's, it's not damaging anything. So... It only has three fish in it, but the substrate is getting broken in. I used the Fritzine 7. So anyhow, let's head out to the Goldfish Aquarium. Now remember, this is only uh, two and a half weeks old. Okay, here we are with the Goldfish Aquarium. I'm shaking it. We'll turn it on. We'll find out what this is. Okay, 7.68. Let me shake it. You sh they, they want you to shake it because they want the water to go over the, the probe at the bottom. 7.7. .7. Now, this is the tank. I'll turn it off, turn it back on. We'll see what it is. 7.7. .7. Okay, 7.72. So, this is the tank I set up. Uh, it's going on its second year. Um, it has kitty litter. It has a little bit of a substrate like the Fluvo uh, stratus sub substrate, you know, for plants. It uh, uses sand, kitty litter, sand, sand mixed with gravel, and um, laterite. So this one does have laterite in it and stuff, so yeah, 7.7, 7.7. That's not bad. It's a little higher in pH than the um, other aquariums. But this is the one that's outside. This is the, the goldfish aquarium. So that's not bad either. Now this one probably could be reading a little higher 
because actually I take water out of this tank once a week to, to water all the plants. So our water's hard here, and uh, that could be a reason why uh, it's a little higher, because I do take water out of it every week to water the plants. Okay, now for the last container, let's check out the small little 2.75 gallon beverage container that I set up. And that one will be using nothing but 100% kitty litter and a plenum. We'll see what that pH is. Okay, here's the small little Eta container that I moved out into the Lanai. 7.7. .7. That's not bad. 63 degrees. So the goldfish container and the container here, they're both reading about the same. So what is this telling us? So it's telling us even though I have different substrates or in two of the containers I have 100% kitty litter, the special kitty kitty litter, it, it kind of <clears throat> tells us that the pH isn't out of hand and that everything's going fine. Now I know that people have said, well, I tried the kitty litter or whatever, or I tried the uh, safety zorb, and my pH has either went down or up. Well, I don't manufacture the product. I, I'm just telling you what I've used, and <clears throat> this is what I have noticed. And that's why I want to do this, to let you know that the tank like you're looking at right now, it's only two and a half weeks old, and yet the pH is just fine. It's not acidic. And it's not too alkaline. And our water here is about 7.5, 7.8 here in Florida. So <clears throat> if that gives you any idea that the tanks, especially the ones out in the Lanai, are running very close to the tap water. And that would make sense because those are the most recent tanks that I have done water changes on and everything else are the ones out in the Lanai. And one, like I said, out in the Lanai, it gets changed water once a week because the water that's in there waters all the plants. Why not use it, right? Kill two birds with one stone. Why should I use hose water when I can use the tank water? But just a little video just to show you that the pH is pretty stable. I have no problems. In fact, I don't even test my tanks really anymore. I just set them up and they go at about uh, maybe six, seven hours of light a day. Even this one, even this one you're looking at, this has the, this little 12 by 12 has a Kessel light on it. I'm not noticing any algae problems or anything. I had a little crip rot there, but it should maybe come back. That's just from me taking it out of the basket, which I kind of thought it was going to happen, especially if you had no crips real rough. When you buy them, this could wind up happening on you. They could just wind up melting away. But hopefully, it'll come back. I do notice some of the leaves did not melt away. So those leaves are probably going to wind up coming back. And I think those crypts are going to do just fine once they get over the shock of being uh, transplanted into this aquarium. But as time goes on, the kitty litter that's in here, it will darken up a little bit. And it won't look that bad. I mean, I would prefer this over white sand if someone asked, you know, if I had a choice. I would take definitely the kitty litter over white sand. White sand's a little too white. And uh, I don't like sand because it's problematic. It, it, it gets stuck in stuff. It gets sucked in your canister filters every time you want to do something. I don't really care for sand that much. It does cosmetically, when it's mixed with some stone, it cosmetically looks like natural, if you want to call it that. But uh, <clears throat> I don't like it. But anyhow, I thought you would enjoy the video. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. And I hope your aquariums are doing great. And happy fish keeping. Until next time.